The Frituals, written and performed by author Caitlin Costello. Chapter 8. Shauna. Serena brings me down a side passage so no one will know that I have been with Moraine. We hurry down the stairs using a few servants as cover. I'll see you later, Serena says, before disappearing back up the stairs. I try to step lightly and look as excited to be there as the other candidates as I merge in with the crowd. You would think acting as if I was in awe of this place would be natural, but I know the smile on my face has to look fake. My stomach is a seething pit of nerves and anger. I can suddenly do a form of magic no human has ever been able to do, and the people who will teach me how to use it correctly want me to renounce my family. Looking happy is the last thing on my mind right now. Though, masking my feelings is something I probably will have to get used to. I push through the crowd until I find Ward, one friend in a sea of faces, and we sit together at the feast, shoulder to shoulder with the other candidates. I've never seen such a rich array of food. Potatoes, glazed carrots, chicken, turkey, four different types of biscuits and rolls. I try to eat, but my nerves have taken away my appetite. What's the matter with you? You usually eat more than I do, Ward observes as he reaches across the table and grabs another buttery roll. Nothing is wrong, I'm just nervous, I say a little too quickly. Ward gives me a look that says he doesn't believe me one bit. Really, I say with a bit more composure. You know I don't like award ceremonies. He gives me another scornful look and is about to say something when a bell tolls, telling us it is time to move on into the main ceremony. We rise as instructed by an elf at the head of each table and move to another room. The seating is alphabetical by our last name, while the adults get to sit pell-mell in the back. Ward, whose last name is Hendrickson, isn't far from me. I, being a flynn, am about halfway through the front crowd. Philippe, being a matic, is a few rows behind, sitting on the aisle. When I sit down, I make sure to find Father, Tetra, and Philippe in the crowd. We sit talking for a few minutes while the hall settles down, but I feel the fear of the next few minutes sitting in my stomach like a stone. I tap my foot, the little heel clicking incessantly on the floor. The girl to my left glances from the tapping of my heel to the way I'm wringing my hands. I feel my face burn as she stares hard, and I shove my hands under my thighs, still feeling the need to move. What is going on with you? Annoyance and concern mingling in her voice. A single trumpet blast sings through the air, sparing me for a moment, but proclaiming my doom. Then a door at the top of a short staircase at the far end of the room is swung open. Everyone turns, shifting in their seats to try to get a glimpse of the famed elven queen. They freeze, mouths agape at her beauty. Moraine moves forward, standing on the little landing at the top of the stairs, smiling down on them. Then, all at once, everyone seems to remember that this is a queen and quickly rises to their feet. I hurry to follow them, every bit of my being pulling me down, trying to force me to lay down and hide under the chairs to crawl between them and out the door. Moraine walks to the front of the hall, long gowns trailing behind her, the fabric spiraling around her as she turns back to face us. The long sleeves of the dress slip down her arms as she raises her delicate hands and signals all to sit. She smiles and scans the crowd around her, locking eyes with me for a brief moment before moving on. Yet another year has passed. A year of peace and prosperity between our two races. Our young grow older and wiser, and each day brings new life. Today, our young around the lake were tested just as they have been for 300 years. Each year, the question arises, and it is time to give the answer we await every year. So I ask you now, has the Chosen One of Cabanaral Lake been found out today. As she speaks, the energy level in the room grows higher and higher on every word. 
The people seated begin to murmur and turn to each other excitedly. I glance at Father and see he knows, like all the parents who have sat where we are sitting, that this time is different from all the others. But I am the only one in the crowd who knows why. Moraine waits with hands clasped elegantly in front of her until the crowd falls silent. Slowly, the crowd turns back to face her. They remain silent for what seems to be an eternity, and I know that it is it. My life is about to change. There is no going back now. I have ruled as queen for a little over 500 years. My life is old and filled with the war of our races. But by our race, I am considered young. I have much to learn. The old tale you tell about Matron and Serena occurred as I was rising to power. When it became known that the merging of our races caused the death of magic, I had a dream for some time that I would be the one to reveal the next ritual of Cabanarel. The next individual blessed with powers like we haven't seen in generations. But part of me knew that I might not be the one. A murmuring broke out again, and she raised a hand and silence resumed. First, I would ask my dear friend to come forward and reveal herself. Serena steps out of the shadows to the queen's right, always guarding her, even in secret. Cries of surprise and awe break through the crowd from both men and elves. Moraine continues, her voice amplified by magic. This is my dear, devoted friend, Serena Nightcastle. Some of you might know her as the Guardian. She has stood at my side for nearly 300 years. She was the wife of the most powerful elf we have ever known, Matron, who controlled four of the five elements. Serena, do you sense a renewal of your husband's power? Serena nods. I do, and I have met and spoken with the candidate. They are young, but wise. Scared, but courageous. Quick to act, but thoughtful. I believe they will use their powers for good. Moraine nods in agreement, turning to the crowd. Would the ritual of Cabanera Lake, and my newest friend, please come forward. Come and claim your destiny, she shouts, voice echoing in the arches of the hall. A measure of stunned silence hangs in the air, and I panic, fearing that they will revolt or do some other terrible thing when a roar of delight and excitement fills the hall with a cacophony of noise. I can't move. I am pinned to my chair by fear. Someone shouts, well, where are they? I glance up and see Moraine and Serena looking to me, hands outstretched, beckoning me forward. I feel cold, like ice, as I rise, my hands shaking. I don't want the world to see that, so I make fists, digging my nails into my hands, already feeling the half-moon indents. What are you doing? The girl says, trying to grab my hand as I try to push my way past her. Wait! Oh my gosh, it's you! I nod and step away from her. The rest of those around us realize, like she did, what is happening and begin to cheer, pushing me along the row until I stumble into the aisle. Shauna! 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 They cry, the sound carrying me to the queen. She takes my hand and squeezes it. Kindly, she doesn't acknowledge how clammy my hand is. She raises her hand, and again, all in the hall fall silent. This is Shauna Flynn, the Fritual of Cabanera Lake. She has a rich history of benders behind her to follow, and a wide road before her. She turns to me. Shauna, would you like to say something? I was chosen. My voice cracks, and I try again. When I look down and see all the eyes on me, I close my eyes. I have been chosen to be the Fritual of Cabanera Lake. I take a deep breath, gathering the courage to blatantly disobey a queen. I don't know exactly what will happen in the next few years, but I open my eyes and find Philippe in the sea of faces who stare at me in awe. I watch as some slowly turn to horror, pity, and sympathy, but I know I will be so much stronger with those that love me by my side, supporting me. 
I hear Tatra and Father saying something and turn to address them when Moraine cuts me off. What Shauna means is she knows she will be so much stronger knowing that those that love her support her decisions to leave and protect herself and them. And, and for right now, I need my family by my side as I go through this transition. My voice cracks and fades away. The crowd shifts like the waters of the lake as they sense the tension between us. I can't look at Father, but I know he is rushing forward. He cries out to me, but tears are filling my eyes, blurring everything into a sea of blue. I can't look at him. I can't see him anyway. I can't do this. This isn't happening. This isn't happening. I take deep, heaving gasps, trying to calm myself as I feel all of the eyes boring into me. Shauna, what the hell? I hear Tatra shout. Get off me. I need to get to my sister. I hear a thud as she punches a guard. I sob, covering my face. I want to turn away. Shauna, he says softly, feet from me, halfway up the staircase. Shauna, listen to me. Focus on me. Breathe. We will figure this out. I am afraid that decision has already been made, Moraine says, kind but firm, like she actually has my best interest at heart. We have rumors that the Dark Ones are on the move. Some have even been spotted outside the city. Even they could feel the magic was different this year. She glances behind her at Serena. We don't want to have the guards remove you. Just let us finish the ceremony so we can move Shauna to a safer location. If there are dark ones here, you are just prolonging her exposure. Please, just stop for two minutes, he asks with the same firm tone. Those in the crowd murmur again as Philippe is recognized. Moraine is taken aback. She clearly is used to people following her every word. She hasn't had to deal with a person like Philippe in a long time. You don't have to do this. We can get out of here and live somewhere else. You don't need to accept this role, he says, wrapping me in his arms. Philippe, don't you see? I have to. I can't just run away from this. This is too important. Anger and pain flash across Philippe's eyes. There's a depth to them that I've never seen before. It scares me, but I can't quite tell why. Shauna, I love you, but I don't think that this is something you should do, he says. If I don't, who will? I might be the only one able to be the ritual. Why didn't you tell me earlier? You were with me after the test, Philippe asks. He glances around. Look, can we finish this conversation somewhere else? He asks Lorraine, but by his tone, it isn't really a question. I take a deep breath, gathering strength and willpower. I have a gift. A gift that if I can use it to protect our people, I will. I want to do it. People murmur, and I hear their whispers. I hear their pain. They feel for me. I hear their doubt. Philippe, I'm going to ask you once more to step back. We need to finish the ceremony, Moraine says. Philippe openly glares but steps back, keeping me within arm's reach. Moraine hands me a silver goblet of water. She raises a hand to silence the murmur, trying to continue the ceremony, but the crowd has already frozen mid-word, staring at me, the doubt disappearing from their lips. The water rises from the cup in a spherical shape, floating a few inches from the rim before collecting back into the cup. My eyes are fixed on the cup, trying to see if I imagined it. I feel tired, like I've spent all day walking through the city. What made the water float? Was that me? Distantly, I hear, Shauna, that's amazing, and feel fully put a hand on my shoulder. It's warm. His hands are normally warm, but this, this is hot. It, it's hot. It burns. I am burning. Flames are licking at my dress. I turn in shock as screams break out in the crowd and I start beating the flames away from my skin. I dump the cup of water on my shoulder, leaving a soaking mess of blue and black scorched fabric and angry red skin. I turn to him as the guards grab him, but he doesn't fight. He, like everyone else in the hall, is staring at his hands. Philippe's hands glow in angry red, like it is still burning. 
I cringe away from him as he reaches out to me, trying to apologize. Shauna, I... I swear, I never knew. I could... I am so sorry, he splutters, pushing his hands as far from me as he can. What is happening? Moraine gracefully steps between the two of us, voice no longer as kind. Philippe, fire and water do not mix. I step away from Philippe, and turning away from the crowd, give myself a few seconds. I hear him trying to push past the guard that comes forward to protect my back. Philippe! I say sharply, turning to face him, not bothering to wipe the tears away. I pause when I notice what is happening in front of me. As my tears fall from my cheeks, they gather together before me, like there is some gravitational pull drawing them all together. I don't know what I am doing or how, but I'm still able to manifest this orb of water. I glance up at Moraine in surprise when I see him. Damien stands behind the queen, his dagger inches from his back. No! I shout and point to Damien, launching my water orb at him. Physically, all it does is shock him, but it is enough for him to drop the dagger with a cry of surprise, and I rush and snatch it up, holding it out in front of me. A murmur breaks out around the hall as those gathered realize that they have just seen an assassination attempt. Damien? Moraine asks, taking a step back while holding the position between me and him. Serena takes a step in front of me, a hand reaching to grab a blade that lay against the small of her back. The guards moving in to flank her. His face splits into a cruel smile. There may be dark ones here. Let us us move her so she isn't exposed, Damien mocks. The hall falls deathly quiet. Every year we have waited patiently for the chosen one to come. It was simply a matter of time. We are in every kingdom. We are the ones blocking your communication to the others. I always thought your sister was right. And these humans are just tainting our power. She is living proof. He turns to me, another dagger appearing in his hand. I take an involuntary step back and try to think of what to do. How did I make the water do that before? I don't know. Goddess, my shoulder hurts, and I am tired, so tired. My arms shake from the weight of the knife, the seconds before it was light. I take another step back, and my knees buckle. Moraine steps to my side, and Serena comes in front of the two of us. Stupid girl, Damien sneers. If I don't kill you, you will die trying to cast spells well before you are ready. I am stronger than you think. Forcing myself to my feet, I hear Philippe struggling against the guards behind me. Please, just let him go. He just wants to protect me. I am sure, Damien says scornfully. Before I can make another comment, Tetra is flying into motion. She is on the stage and grabbing the loosely gripped dagger from my hand. That is my sister you are threatening. That is not going to happen, she hisses before plunging the blade into Damien's chest. Who do you think you are? He croaks, staring down at the blade. I am the Fritual's big sister, and I will always protect her. She shoots a look at Moraine before yanking the blade out of his chest and plunging it into his neck. Always, she hisses. Tay, I cry and pull her back as in his dying moments he lashes out his hand transforming into one with inky black claws. We hold each other and watch as he falls to his knees. He stares at us. You will not escape us, Shauna Flynn. Clutching feebly at his neck, Damien falls to his side in a bloody heap. Inky black magic stains his blood. The other guards in the room hurry the crowd out of the hall and away from the queen, before more damage can occur. I sink to my knees as Tedra clutches me. In the corner of the room, I see him still standing there, forgotten after Tetra's attack. Philippe, I am so sorry, I whisper, 
as the room swirls away into blackness and I sink deeper into Tetra's arms. Hi everybody, this is Caitlin Costello, the author and narrator of The Frituals. If you've enjoyed this podcast so far, please leave a review or rating where you listened. It really helps to get the podcast in front of more people. If you can't possibly wait for another episode of The Frituals, fear not, because the full audiobook is now available. A slew of stores, including Google Play, Apple, Highbooks, Scribd, Chirp, Kobo, Walmart, Audiobooks.com, and Nook Audiobooks, and it's being added to more stores every single day. It's also available at your local library, so if you request it from your library, they should be able to get it into their system. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you next week. This has been a production of The Frituals, written and performed by Caitlin Costello. Text copyright 2018 to Caitlin Costello. Production copyright 2020, Caitlin Costello.